we have become so used to the fact that cars are the way to get around uh, that we, we dismiss the alternatives. And here's a, a, an appalling ad dissing the alternative of taking the bus. So trying to get somebody to buy a cheap new car uh, that the person will have, then have to support for the rest of his life. And also it's the, the ads try to make it look like uh, any alternative to the car is a second-rate way to live. And the, to make you realize that uh, really, you, you do need a car to find a mate. Well, parking benefit districts are, are one third of this trio of reforms that, that I recommend. And I think that each one can be done alone, but the three together will transform our cities. And the first policy is to charge the right prices for curb parking. And who could object to that? But by that, I mean the lowest prices uh, that will leave one or two open spaces uh, on every block so that drivers will see an open space whenever they arrive at their destination. So the parking spaces will be well used, almost all of them will be occupied, but they'll also be readily available because one of them <laughs> will be vacant and waiting for you. So this is really, I think, the best goal for the curb, if it's going to be used for parking, is to have it uh, well used and readily available. And then to make this politically popular, I recommend uh, parking benefit districts that use the meter revenue to pay for added public services on the metered block so that uh, people will see the benefits of the money put into the meter. It doesn't disappear. It comes right out the other side of the meter and cleans the sidewalk and uh, trims the street trees and removes graffiti every night, whatever the, the neighborhood wants to do with the money. And then after you've done these two things, cities can remove all street parking requirements because if there's always a parking available uh, at the curb, the city doesn't need to require all street parking to prevent overcrowding of the curb spaces. And removing all street parking requirements um, will uh, allow many more valuable uses of the curb lane than long-term parking. In this course, I will focus on the second policy, uh, returning the meter revenue to the, um, uh, to the neighborhood where the meters are located. And this will change the, uh, our attitude towards uh, parking meters. Uh, this image uh, suggests what most people feel about a parking meter, that the, the money might just as well be sent to the United Nations or to pay for the war in Iraq rather than to clean the sidewalks and remove graffiti. Uh, it seems to me the money has no ability to generate political support for the parking meters. And this is the attitude I think that many people must think that urban planners have towards curb parking. Whenever anyone arrives at their destination and doesn't find a vacant space uh, for free right where they, where, where they are, they think city planning has failed and that the, the people who are trying to reform parking are awful people. And the NIMBYs have, about parking have, have, have been around for a very long time. For many people, a parking meter triggers what's called the parking derangement syndrome, which is uh, defined as the uh, acute onset of extreme paranoia in reaction to the prospect of paying for parking and leading the afflicted person to in hyperbolic language and lose touch with reality. If we know where the money is going, paying for parking seems uh, a very sensible idea. Here's a picture of uh, in a neighborhood around the Los Angeles Coliseum. Uh, and this was during the 1984 Olympics, but it, it happens around any event at the Coliseum. Is that the people who live in the neighborhood, they move their uh, own cars onto the street and they rent out their driveways and backyards for people going to the, uh, to the games. And many people have a regular uh, arrangement with, the, with a, a particular house, that they always go to the same house whenever they go to the Coliseum. So I think that parking is not un-American. It's very American to expect people to pay for what they get, uh, especially if you know that you're going to get the money.